Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beginning of the end of the uh, second FEM International Orchestra Conference. And I'd like to uh, thank our hosts here in Amsterdam and the officials of the International Federation of Musicians for putting together an interesting and a productive conference. And I appreciate the opportunity to be involved here in the conference together with our AFM representatives, uh, Chris Durham, our Director of Symphonic Services, and our Orchestral Conference Chairpersons, Francine Schutzman of the Organization of Canadian Symphony Musicians, Carla Lemeyer Tatum, the President of our Regional Orchestra Players Association, and of course Bruce Ridge, the Chairperson of our International Conference of Symphony and Opera Musicians. This morning we have an esteemed panel that will examine and explore topics of labor economics, topics that strike at the very heart of why we exist as a union. And as I've said so many times in so many places, our unions exist only for two reasons. We exist to organize and we exist to bargain. And we exist to bargain labor agreements that will improve the lives of our members. Today, the topics of wages, mobility, relocation, unfair competition, those topics have been at the epicenter of discussions within the American Federation of Musicians since the dawn of our union over 100 years ago. And yet we talk about them today as if we've just realized how much these things affect our ability to establish and maintain effective compensation and benefits for professional musicians. For the better part of the last 30 years as president of the AFM's local in Dallas, Fort Worth in a place called Texas, I organized numerous symphony orchestras from scratch, bargaining new constructive agreements and uh, with our well-established symphony and opera companies, I negotiated progressive successor agreements because for the most part over the last 30 years, um, even after 9-11, we had what I would refer to as an economic tailwind. We had the wind to our back. We had great economic uh, conditions to, to work with. But today the uh, landscape has changed dramatically. Twenty trillion dollars of equity has evaporated from the consumer uh, worldwide and that, that's as a result of the massive, the massive market collapse or meltdown two years ago. In the USA, where managements rely upon givers to balance their books and pay musicians, um, discretionary funds are harder and harder to come by. We find ourselves facing an economic headwind. The wind is at our face now, and it's strong, and it's, and it's harsh. And, and that also includes a new attitude on the part of managers, a new breed of managers that have forgotten what was understood in the old days that for musicians to play their best and to reach their potential and for us to reach our potential as a union, there must be a fair bargain. So many company managers and operators of the houses and the halls where we work have, have collaborated sometimes and I'm going to give you an example of one of the topic, uh, topics that we're going to talk about today. They collaborate with unscrupulous booking agents in America and they'll buy prepackaged low budget imitations of the great uh, European orchestras to sell to U.S. promoters uh, who are desperate to lower their costs of presenting uh, classical music. One example of that is the Moscow State Radio uh, Symphony Orchestra. Has anyone ever heard of the Moscow State Radio Symphony Orchestra? No one's heard of them, have you? Well, last year, uh, on their nine-week U.S. tour, unlike the great orchestras of Europe that stay in elegant hotels where they play or in great, uh, when they play in great spaces like Carnegie Hall or uh, Symphony Hall in Boston, the Moscow State Radio Orchestra slogged to Ashland, Kentucky, uh, to Quincy, Illinois, and Zanesville, Ohio, uh, you know, riding in buses for seven hours a day, uh, staying in flea bag hotels, um, their pay was about $40 a day, no meal allowance. The bus drivers would stop at places called Walmart. Have you ever heard of Walmart? You know, so they would, they would pull the buses up to Walmart and the musicians would get out and go into Walmart and buy what they needed. Uh, 
the conditions like this are, are, are deplorable for highly trained professional musicians. And, uh, but these lesser-known bargain-based orchestras provided an alternative for presenters that could uh, increase their profit margins by undercutting union conditions. The Moscow State Radio Orchestra performed 53 concerts in 67 days last year and earned agents and presenters and house managers five million dollars. Do you know how much the orchestra musicians got from that? About one-tenth of that split up between 80 or 90 musicians. Uh, don't forget that those musicians had to pay for their own food out of that $40 uh, daily concert pay. So uh, other low-budget foreign orchestras that are touring through the U.S. include the Odessa Philharmonic, uh, the Orchestra de Sao Paulo, and the Shanghai Symphony. Well, 20 years ago, the Iron Curtain crumbled and musicians in Eastern Europe and in Russia hurried westward in search of a better life. Well, how does the change in economics here on this continent and now in China and elsewhere affect our ability as a union to preserve, protect, and defend a wage standard that is coming under increasing stress and strain? What are we doing in our respective locations to address unfair competition? from organized orchestras or, uh, and, and from individual offenders? How do we address the drive to relocate from one country to another, the newfound mobility afforded by the free Internet? And, of course, how do we protect our jobs from these factors? Our panel of experts today uh, include uh, uh, Gergely Bakshe, an attorney for the Hungarian Musicians Union, uh, Yves Sapir, president of uh, the French uh, Musicians Union, SNAM, uh, Walter Oliviero, uh, representing Sodom of Argentina, and Ella Brokstra, the HR manager of the Broadcast Musicians, the Broadcast Music Center here in the Netherlands. They will bring their unique perspectives to the segments, to these subjects. And uh, so now, ladies and gentlemen, without uh, further ado, please welcome uh, our panel and our first panelist, Ellen Brokstra.